Okay guys, and what I want to do in this video is introduce this idea of the business cycle. So, kind of, what I'm going to do before we start off is essentially ask you to pause the video and see if you can answer these five questions yourself, just to try and set um, or get our mindset ready to um, to approach this topic. So, um, once you're fi uh, ready, pause the video there, and when you've got answers to those, uh, press play. Okay, so the starting questions on this idea of the business cycle, which we don't know what it is yet, and that's absolutely fine. So what determines the wealth of a nation or the standard of living in a nation? Okay, and the answer that I'm going to give to this is, and I'm going to use a red pen, is production. Okay, and the reason is because we define our wealth based on what we can consume and we can only consume what is produced. Okay, so what is the name that we give to this measure of wealth, at least per year? And what I'm going to write down here is real GDP. Okay, so what we're saying is we're trying to get a value of production, total production has taken place in the economy and we don't want changes in price level to affect its value. So we've removed the effects of inflation. Is this measure of national income always the same? The answer is absolutely not. No, it is not, okay? It changes from year to year, and that's kind of what we're gonna be looking at now in the business cycle. We're checking real GDP against time. Excuse me. Can this measure increase? And the answer is yes, it can. And that's what's called economic growth. Okay, yes, it can increase, and that is called economic growth. That is the definition of economic growth, an increase in real GDP from one year to the next. And the next thing is, can it reduce? And yes, it certainly can. Okay, so yes, it can reduce, and we can call that a recession. If it's bad enough, we can call it a depression. Or another thing is negative economic growth. Okay, so these are the things that we're talking about now. I really, really hope that this all makes perfect sense to you. I hope that you're following, and unfortunately you can't ask any questions because this is a recording, but still, I hope that um, you, you, you can follow everything that's being said here. So the business cycle, before we even gave a definition, I am going to use a question that seems to resonate with a number of students because it resonated with me when I was young and I've asked uh, even today uh, the students that I had in class and they were saying, yeah, it's the exact same thing. Do, do, do any of you um, that are lucky enough to have had uh, met, have met your grandparents and have talked to them, have you had the conversation that they say, well, you know, in my day, um, you know, we didn't have these video games, we didn't have, even it depends on where you're from, and remember, I'm older, dishwashers and washing mach machines and stuff like that, okay, and so, you know, you'd want to see it, you guys have a much easier life than we did, our life as your grandparents was far harder when we were your age than the life that you live now. And, I mean, a number of people, it seems to be, no matter what country or no matter what generation I say this to, yes, that conversation has existed. And there is a very important reason for that. So if our standard of living is influenced and decided by our production, what can we say has happened to real GDP over time? And And... If we're going to explain the change in the standard of living as, uh, that our grandparents experienced compared to what we have experienced, well, what we've noticed is that we have more material stuff. And what I'm saying is that if we have GDP on this axis and time on this axis, I can actually draw this line here. And I can say that this is the general progression of GDP, real GDP, real production over time. Over year on year, if you get a long run trend, and this is what this is, long run trend, okay? Or long term trend, and it's sometimes called the long run trend line, long term trend line. What we should notice is that GDP rises over time. So let's just say here that I just take this, okay? And I take, and I go up from this period in time, all right? And I go across to the real GDP line, the production line, the national production line, national income line. And what I get is real GDP1. Okay, that's what I get there. Now, let's say I take another or a different point in time. 
and which is later on. And how do we know it's later on? Because this time that I'm examining is further to the right along the time axis, which is down here. And then I just go up to the, the GDP line, the long run trend of the real GDP line. That's what this red line is here. Okay. Uh, and I go up at a later point in time, I touch this and go across, I get real GDP2. What that means is that because as time has passed from time one to time two, real GDP has risen. So the long run trend, and honestly, if you do kind of INS or history or something like that, since about 1750, it's known as the hockey stick of GDP growth. Uh, the long run trend of GDP over time has increased. So what we are kind of saying here, and again, you know, look, I, I, I will deal with all issues as they come along. But if we take something along the lines of 1990, okay, which um, potentially a lot of you weren't born then, something like the year 2000. 2010 and let's say something like 2020 along here okay what we should see is that our material standard or the material standard of living in a nation has improved as time has gone on and on and on okay and, and I hope that that makes sense to you and um, it is not just a first world thing it is certainly a developed a more economically developed country thing certainly yes but I mean since the 1990s even since the 80s you have the Celtic Tigers and or sorry that's Ireland you have the Asian Tigers and um, experiencing huge GDP growth okay so what I want you to see is this that the higher the standard the higher the standard of living depends on the amount of stuff that is produced and over time there has been a long run trend of increasing quantity produced which means better richer higher standard of living okay in material terms of course that is all right now the next one of the questions that we've already answered here and forgive me as i adjust this up one of the questions that we've already answered here is that is gdp the exact same every year no can it increase yes can it decrease yes can it be negative yes can it be positive yes okay so i mean the growth rates can be negative or positive gdp can't be negative okay the, the lowest GD, real gdp you can get is zero so we have already established that we have a long run trend of increasing real GDP over time. But one of the things that I want you to understand is, in reality, real GDP can change from year to year, invariably always does. And um, it does not equal the long term growth trend. What we actually find is there are periods of time when real GDP is rising, reaches a peak, then falls, usually doesn't fall back to its original lowest level, Reeks, reaches a trough or a lowest point, then rises to another peak, usually above its high, the previous highest level or the previous peak, and so on and so forth. Okay, something like that. Now, what I want you to understand is what I have drawn in the blue line when you connect the peaks and the troughs and all of that is the business cycle. Okay, that's what the business cycle is. So we might as well, and again, you must forgive me, uh, I'll just kind of bring us down here to the writing. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. Excuse me. Uh, take a photo of that, guys, and um, on your phone and just refer to it as I'm writing. So pause it there, take a photo of that. And then refer, look at your phone when you're coming back to this, okay? So now I'm just going to bring this down and look at the writing and the definitions. So what is the business cycle? The business cycle shows the short-run fluctuations, the changes between real GDP and time, excuse me, around its long-term trend, its long-run trend. So if I can bring you down again or up to this, this red line is the long-run trend, and this blue line up and down is real GDP changing as years go by on this bottom axis here. So the business cycle, as we've already said, so what does it do? It shows the, the, the how production changes over time. Real GDP, national output, national income, national production changes. National income, national expenditure changes over time and around its long run trend, which hopefully is upward sloping and that's why we have a higher standard of living than our grandparents did. Okay, what do we mean by the short run? Well, in macroeconomics, and this actually becomes more important for Unit 3.2 in the new IB syllabus, and um, being taught and started to be taught in, in September 2020, um, a period of time where resource prices are fixed. Now, what do I mean by that? 
I'll just quickly go into that, but I'll deal with it more then. I want you to know what I mean by that. So if you own a business and you employ a supplier, you employ workers, okay, what you do with those people is you engage in contracts. And usually contracts are between one to three years. So if you have a contract of let's say one year and every single person in the economy has a contract of one year, the sh that means that those prices of inputs, the prices, the wages that you pay to the labor, excuse me, the prices that you pay to your suppliers will not be renegotiated until that year is over. Okay, so it's the period of time because of contracts and they could say to you, oh, hold on a second here. We just signed this contract three months ago and now inflation has gone through the roof and our costs have gone up and our cost of living has gone up. We said, well, look, I'm sorry now. Um, and they're rarely sorry, but they'll say, I'm sorry, but we're not going to renegotiate that because we have a contract. So therefore, we will renegotiate the contract when this current one is up. So resource prices would be fixed for that one year. If the contracts in the economy lasted three years, then the short run in that economy would be three years. In general, if you can't understand that idea, just assume that all contracts in the economy in terms of employment or in terms of business contracts with suppliers last three years. And that's not a bad approximation for the short run. Now, there are kind of, it's said that there are four phases of the business cycle. All right. Well, if there are four phases of the business cycle, I would disagree with that. I would say there are two phases and two points in time. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this back up here and I'm going to um, talk about each of these different phases. OK, so the very first is the expansionary phase. And let's just say we start off something like that. The expansionary phase is that period of time where real GDP is rising. So from whatever this is here, I'll call this, forgive me, I'll go in red, I'll call this time T1, okay? So from time T1 all the way along to I would suggest in and around here, okay? Down to time T2, I'll go down here. So this is T2. All of this here, this time here, is the expansionary phase, okay? Just making sure you can see that, and you can, okay? Now, this time from here to here is the expansionary phase. What we have here is the peak, okay? That's not really a phase. That's a point in time, per se, but if you want, you can refer to it as a phase. So what we are saying here is that real GDP is rising all the way up until this um, from T1 all the way across here into this time, and it's rising from this here to across there. That's the expansionary phase. Then um, the economy has reached a, a peak, otherwise known as an economic boom sometimes. I would say an economic boom is an extended period of time between three and, well, Ireland went through one for got nearly 10 years, but anyway. Um, it is more of a peak. Uh, it is more of a period of time, but you know, um, you you find these different things. But just call it the peak for the moment. Then what happens is a recession occurs. The definition of a recession. There's no perfect one, but a working definition that I've used all the way through my college and through and that was given to me. I didn't make it up. Um, and, and and through my teaching is a period of two consecutive quarters with falling real GDP, with falling output, okay? So what I want you to see now is that as time moves on along here, what's happening to real GDP? Well, it's falling, 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 okay? And it's falling down to what I think is in and around here. So from time T2 to time T3, this here is what's called the contractionary phase. Forgive my writing, guys. Okay. Contractionary phase. Okay. We have falling out, but we are having a lower standard of living. All right. And then what we've got here now is, um, this is the lowest point and this is the trough. T-R-O-U-G-H. That is the bottom part of the recession. OK, and from there now, again, it, you know, I mean, I'm not going to but from there all the way up, we're into another expansionary phase. OK, and then another peak. And I'll just write that here again. Peak two. Trough. 
two, expansionary phase two, contractionary phase two. Okay, now there's a few things that I want you guys to see, all right, is that, um, and I'm going to come to the internet one here. Looking at this example, now just to be clear, I'm looking at Cognity, I got this, they got this source from the World Bank, and um, we have this concept here um, about the Russian Federation, and we have real GDP over the left-hand side here in trillions of US dollars, um, controlled for inflation, it's real GDP, just keep that in mind, and then time here. Now, the question that I would ask you is, starting from 2009, okay, can you tell me at what point A, B, C, or D does the expansionary phase go from? So we can see that this is the first trough. This is the lowest point in real GDP. From 2009 all the way across to 2013, real GDP is consistently rising. That here from 2009 to 2013 is the contractionary phase. Okay, now at point B, we are at a peak, okay? From 2013 down all the way to 2016, we are in the contractionary phase. So that's from B to D is the contractionary phase. And then 2016 is the trough, the lowest point of real output in that um, cycle. And then what happens? we go again okay now just again because i'm irish so i have to give you the irish experience um is this one here in the irish times okay this is the kind of main um broadsheet newspaper in ireland figures show economy grew by 5.5 percent in 2014. now um i will look at this uh just quickly because i want to go so remember that figures show that the economy grew 5.5 percent in 2004 excuse me Right, so what that actually means was, just very, very quickly, um, in January 1st, 2004, okay, the Irish economy produced, for example, 100 euro worth of stuff, okay? Now, the growth rate, G-R-O-W-T-H rate, equals 5.5%. What that means is the 31st of December 2004, okay, the Irish economy produced 105 euro and 50 cent worth of stuff, okay? That's all that means in a very general, keep this stuff easy, that's what a growth rate means. Our real GDP, real GDP went from in 2000 and well, let's say 2003, um, 31st of December 2003, uh, was 100 euro, and a real GDP in 31st of December 2004 was 105 euro and 50 cent. Okay, that's the first thing that I want you to see. The next thing now, it wasn't always roses in, in my home country. What I would like you to look at, now granted this is Wikipedia, it is not the most reliable of resources all the time, but this is only for illustrative purposes. The Irish economy entered severe recession in 2008. I was living there, okay? It was the biggest economic boom followed by the biggest economic crash and then entered an economic depression in 2009. So please don't forget, there's no hard um, and, and fast rules, okay, for the definition of a recession versus a depression. A recession, as I've said, and this isn't even a rule. In America, you need the Bureau of Labor Statistics to declare that it is a recession. But I think a good rule for a recession is falling real GDP, not falling real GDP growth, falling real GDP for two consecutive quarters. A quarter is three months, okay? So the first qu quarter is January, February, March. The second quarter, April, May, June, and so on and so forth, okay? So two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP or falling output, right? So what I want you to look at here, don't worry about this, the Economic and Social Research Institute, the ESRI in Ireland, predicted an economic tr a contraction of 14% by 2010. So again, well, let's keep the numbers nice and simple, all right? So what we're saying is, let's say, well, it's, I'll just go in um, 2008, real GDP was 100 euro, 
Why, why make it difficult? Okay, a 14% contraction. Real GDP growth equals minus 14%. So therefore, between there and 2010, so 2010, real GDP equals 86 euro. That's what that means, okay? That the value of total output in the Irish economy fell from 100 to 86 euro, um, but insert real numbers there. I mean, that's a big drop, guys. That's a really, really, really big drop. Okay, now, so the only reason I'm kind of doing those simple examples is just to show you um, the kind of business cycle in practice. You can have um, an incredible um, period of growth. Yeah, just finding the pages that I'm on. You can have an incredible period of growth and an incredible period of contraction. And then now the Irish economy is improving again and again, but that was before COVID. So the next part that I want to analyze, assess, and please keep that photograph of the business cycle that you have on your phone in mind. And again, there's an assumption that I'm making there that you have a smartphone, but such is life. Okay, now what's going on in the expansionary phase? That's the bit where, well, I better not say it, but anyway, what's going on? Well, the first thing is real GDP is rising, okay? It's increasing. Unemployment, well, the question is, how are they producing this extra stuff? Well, they have to hire more people, more factors of production in general to produce that extra stuff. So we've got falling, okay? Um, now, the next thing that we've got here is what's happening to inflation? Usually, during the expansionary phase, we're going to say inflation is rising, but we're just going to leave it for this subunit as we don't know. Usually, that's what we're saying. As scarce resources become more and more scarce, we're talking about labor becomes more scarce, costs rise, and if costs rise, usually prices rise. But for the moment, we're just going to say we don't know. Okay, so what's happening here now um, with real GDP at the peak? This is at the top. And excuse me, I'll tell you what I'll do now here, guys. I'll go back to Cognity and just show you. So during the expansionary phase, which is from here all the way to B, what happened? Real GDP was increasing. Unemployment was falling. We're not sure about inflation per se. We need more information, more of that in the next subunit. At the peak, which is B here, 2013, this point here, okay? Well, what has happened to real GDP? Well, I mean, you don't really use the word you're defining um, um, in the definition, but it has peaked, okay? Or it's at a, a current max, okay? Current maximum, all right? What has happened to unemployment? It's the current minimum, okay? It's the lowest it's going to be. Because in order to produce the highest stuff that we're producing in this general period of time, in this cycle, um, well, we're going to be using the most factors of production. And what's happened to inflation? Again, we don't know. And you're like, well, why, John, are you covering it? Well, the reason that I'm covering it is to make sure that you're aware that this also has a part to play. Now, the contractionary phase here, guys, let's go back to this, okay? From B all the way down to D. Real GDP is falling, and this is a cycle because it was hit a trough here, hit a trough here, went up and back down to a trough, and now it's going up again. It's a cycle, it repeats. Okay, so from B to D, that's what the contractionary phase is. And forgive me while I adjust this, what's happening? Well, real GDP is falling, unemployment is increasing. Okay, and inflation, we're usually not sure yet. And again, I, we, I'm bringing that to your attention so you're aware to talk about it when we get to 3.2. And now the trough, okay, which was D, and the, tr <coughs> excuse me, the trough here is a, a point in time. Now I know, it, you, you know it's not gonna be like one second and one day and then it's all gravy again that the real GDP is rising again. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying here is the trough is the few months maybe six months, maybe a year that it's at a bottom. So I like you can say the trough or the trough phase and the, the peak phase and all this kind of stuff. But I'm just saying it's sometimes better to think about it as a point in time, particularly when you're looking at a graph. Okay. So at the trough, well, real GDP is at its lowest. Okay. Okay. Um, um, unemployment is at its highest. And inflation, we're not sure. 
Okay, so again, we've talked about examples. We've looked at Russia. We've looked at Ireland. We've looked at a number of things. Now, this is sometimes where I could lose a few people, and please don't concern yourself, all right? I want to introduce this idea of potential output. I want you to understand what produces uh, output, and what produces output, what produces the goods and services that you and I enjoy, but the factors of production. Now, if we assume that in kind of most first world countries, most economically developed countries, the standard answer to a work week for the length of a work week for a worker is in around 40. Some are more, some are less. Okay, that is sustainable for workers to work 40 hours a week. Um, uh, the poor teachers work far longer and harder, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, but still, um, the standard work week is about 40 hours. The idea of potential output was if the f all factors of production were used to their fullest sustainable um, use, it's how much output would be produced. So we're talking no unemployment. I'm not saying everybody's working because obviously there are children like yourselves most likely that are in school full time and there's a reason for that. So you're not part of what we call the labor force. That's in a later unit, okay? So, but what we are saying is that um, 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 if we could use the people that want to work, are willing to work, are looking for jobs, there's no unemployment, anyone that is looking for a job can find one. All the machines are working 40 hours a week or whatever, all the workers that work the machines are working 40 hours a week. How much could we make? That's potential output, essentially. Okay, that's potential output. but it's the long run sustainable real GDP that could be produced if all factors of production were used sustainably. If any of you have ever studied something like um, World War II, there is a reason why I bring that up. Because during World War II, you had the civilian population in large parts of Western and Eastern Europe, in Japan, um, all the way around the world, um, working 100 hour weeks. There was a reason for that, because they were at war. Now that's not sustainable, but it's possible that you can produce more than what we have defined as potential economic output. But the idea is it's unsustainable, okay? What we are actually saying here is that if we look at this long run trend at potential, as potential output, it's a guess, there is no scientific way to, do it, to look at it or to define it or to find it out, all it is, is a guess, okay? Um, but if we kind of say there's this concept or idea of potential output, what the economy would be able to produce sustainably forever, and we see that as we add more and more capital, as workers get better trained and better educated, the amount of output that we can produce over time rises, okay? But the business cycle shows that it doesn't rise evenly, okay? There is uh, a fluctuation around the long run trend. So let's talk about this idea that is very important to introduce now called output gaps, okay? So what we are saying here, at this point in time, how will I do this? I'll do it this way, okay? At this point in time, time T1, okay. Potential output, the sustainable level of output in the economy is here. So it's real GDP potential, okay? But what the economy is actually producing based on this blue part of the business cycle is here. It's above the sustainable level of output, which is real GDP, and we'll just say C for current, current, okay? So what I'm going to say here now is that this distance okay, and I will have to bring my writing up here, is called an output gap. But what type of output gap is it? Is it positive or negative? Well, I would say it's positive, and the reason is because we're making more stuff than is sustainable. Now, the idea is it's neither positive or negative if you diverge from sustainability just because... Um, 
it, it's not sustainable. It will cause a correction, which is what a recession is. Okay, but still, um, I mean, it's you're, you're better producing too much than too little. Now, that's a positive output gap. I will define that, but I think you can see what that is just by looking at this diagram. Now, unfortunately, there are periods of contraction or contractionary phases, and there are also um, um, troughs. Okay, so if we look and we define this red line as potential GDP, and I just want to make sure that I'm doing this the exact same here as I've done there, okay, and we look at that at this point in time, give me one second, okay, God, is that straight? That's nowhere near straight, I do apologize. At point in time T2, okay, so what we're going to say is we're going to get the blue pen out, and we're going to go straight across here, and I just, mm, well, we were saying at this point in time, it doesn't have to be at a trough. Okay, and I go straight across, and I'm saying that this C1, P1, and this is real GDP, real GDP, currently, and that's the second time period to do with time period two, but that's um, lower or less than our potential level of output. What the economy was capable of producing if the factors of production that exist in the economy were being used to their full sustainable potential. We're not talking about wartime production here, guys, okay? Sustainable potential, and which is potential too, okay? So what I want you to see here, that this um, gap or this distance between the red line and the blue line is called an output gap also. But is it positive or negative? Well, it's a negative output gap because current real GDP is below the potential, what we're capable of producing. And don't forget our standard of living is defined by what we produce. So what we're actually saying here, excuse me, is that we're not using our factors of production to their full sustainable potential. That's an opportunity missed Okay, you know, we could be living a higher standard of living. And you see, this is actually a really interesting debate, and I don't want to get into this now, but this was the kind of debate that existed between communist societies and capitalist societies, you know, during the 50s and 60s and 70s. Now, I, I believe that communism has been an abject failure, and I make no apologies for saying that, because it's, the lessons of history have told us as much. But still, I just think that, they, you know, their point was interesting, that they could, excuse me, I actually need you to take a photo of that. Their point was, well, hold on a second, in a communist society, we could make people work in certain sectors and there wouldn't be any unemployment, all right? So, um, you know, true, but how do they guide their allocation of scarce resources into the production of what goods without a price system? And that's why it failed. Um, now, sorry, I've done this again, I do apologise. Can you do me a favour and can you take a photograph of that, please, while we, and have a photograph of that diagram while we're looking at it on the, uh, uh, looking at the definitions, okay? So positive output gap, what is it? When the economy is producing more output than its long run potential. This means that current GDP is higher than potential GDP. And I'll say that more accurately now. This means that current real GDP is higher than potential real GDP. Don't forget it's potential sustainable, sustainable potential, okay? You can work. I met a guy in Ireland during the economic boom and he was calculating his errors. He was a builder and all we were doing were building property the whole time. And um, he'd work 90 hours that week and he was coming back on the bus, and he looked like he was drunk, and he wasn't, it was just fatigue from all the work he was doing. That's not sustainable. You can't work 90 hours a week every week for the rest of your life. He was working beyond the sustainable potential level of output, as were a lot of other people in all fairness to them. Um, a negative output gap is when the economy is producing less output than its long run potential. Okay, so that's in the IB is seen as a time when the government should intervene with what are called demand management policies. Again, later on in the course, okay? This means that current real GDP is lower than potential real GDP. Now, you really must forgive me. The last thing, and I'm sure this video is going on and on and on. The last thing that I want you to see here is this idea about calculating growth. Now, I have done this in previous videos, but I'm more than happy to do it again. I am saying a decrease in real GDP versus a decrease in real GDP growth.
Right, as always, I keep everything simple. The numbers are simple. Well, what's the calculation? What's the formula for real GDP growth? Real GDP in year two minus real GDP in year one divided by real GDP in year one multiplied by 100 over one. Well, what does that mean when it's at home? Well, let's look at an example. We have real GDP in 2015 is 100 euro and real GDP in 2016 is 200 euro. So let's find the real GDP growth rate as a percentage um, between those two numbers. So what we've got is real GDP growth equals real GDP in year two. That's 200 up here. So we've got 200 minus real GDP in year one. That's this 100 up here, minus 100 over real GDP in year one, still 100 euro, multiplied by 100 over one. So let's tighten this up here. 200 minus 100 is 100 over 100 multiplied by this bit here, which is 100 over 1. Now, I am just, I know you can cancel. Some of you are like, oh my God, that was simple. Some of you just looked at the numbers and said, yeah, obviously it's this. I'm just gonna go through it nice and slow. So how do we multiply fractions? Top by top, bottom by bottom. 100 by 100 is 10,000. And then 100 by one is 100. 10,000 divided by one, or excuse me, 10,000 divided by 100 is simply 100. The answer here, the real GDP growth rate, the real increase in production in our economy was 100%. And that's obvious. If you go from 100 to 200, that's a 100% increase. Okay? You've doubled it. You multiplied it by 2, which is an increase of 100%. Now, with that done, let's go back now to another example. So let's say we've got real GDP in 2016 was 200 and real GDP in 2017 equals 300 euro. Okay, now what I'm actually going to do is probably just move this down so you can see the formula which is there. Okay, so real GDP growth between those two years equals GDP or GDP in year two, which is 300, minus real GDP in year one, which is 200, over real GDP in year one, which is 200, multiplied by 100 over one. So let's tighten up this bit here. 300 minus 200 is 100 over 200, multiplied by 100 over one. That equals 10,000 over 200, uh, uh, which equals 50. And that is 50%. Between um, 2016 and 2017, you must forgive me, I do apologize sincerely, you couldn't see that last bit, um, um, real GDP increased by 50%. Okay, that's what we're saying there. That is a drop in real GDP growth. It is an increase in real GDP. Okay, keep that in mind when we're looking at things like this. If we go from 2009 to point A in 2011. See the way the slope is steeper. That means its growth rate, which is the slope, okay, is faster, is, is more than between 2011 and 2013. That's because this line is, is, is um, flatter, okay? But that's not a reduction in real GDP, okay? It's increasing just at a slower rate. That means that from 2009 to 2013, that's the expansionary phase. Even though real GDP growth is slowing, it's not negative. When it's negative, that means that real GDP is falling, okay? And that's a reduction in real GDP, not a reduction in real GDP growth. Okay, it's both, fine. But it's a reduction in real GDP, and that's when the contractionary phase sets in, which is when real GDP falls. Um, guys, thank you so, so much for watching the video. That's me done there. Um, I really hope this helped. Um, um, I hope that you have a better understanding of what the business cycle is. And I really hope to see you in the next video. Thanks very much again.